James Bond's world of super spies, luscious ladies and washboard ab chaps isn't one that's been kept away from silver screens for any major length of time, but unfortunately he's been absent from the video game world for far too long. In fact, although the James Bond mythos is ripe for adaptation, it's actually quite surprising how little there is to pick from when you stack up every entry the martini slinging agent has been a part of. That said though, a series that's been around for this long has inevitably racked up its fair share of tie-ins as well as original titles. Enough to divide fans on their favourites. As the series has aged, everyone from Sean Connery to Pierce Brosnan to Daniel Craig have allowed different generations to pick their favourite Bonds. But when deciding who played the womanising Maverick best, video game fans also take into account who had the best tie-ins. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best James Bond video games of all time. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10. 007. Quantum of Solace. Quantum is first up out the sheer fact that it's essentially Call of Duty, but with James Bond, which is admittedly a pretty damn good mix, but it's almost like a completely different title that's been given a Bond theme skin. Unlike Activision's defining series though, Quantum switches between third and first person during key moments, such as taking cover, performing contextual kills, and doing stealth attacks. It makes sense as the studio didn't pay for Daniel Craig's likeness for no reason, goddammit, and so the camera constantly zooms out to show off their fairly accurate Bond character model in all of its glory. Succeeding where the movie failed by actually, you know, being an entertaining product that actually made sense, the only thing lacking here was a sense of originality, making the finished article feel more like a Call of Duty mod than a full release. Number 9. James Bond 007, Bloodstone. Another entry for the forever hating his own role Daniel Craig era, who once again lends his scowling face to a title, Bloodstone moves away from the plot of any movie directly, and instead spins a story that's essentially just an excuse to smash in as many terrorist skulls with your bare hands as possible. Swapping to a third person perspective to complement the renewed focus on melee combat, this incredibly competent third person shooter took Gears of War's stop and pop cover system and added in some lightning fast, brutal melee takedowns that saw you blitz through corridors of goons in a flurry of gut punches and meaty kicks like you were playing through that one scene from Old Boy. With an entirely original plot and a full likeness from Craig, including his voice, this underrated licensed gem is a perfectly serviceable action shooter that far more people should have picked up. Number 8. Tomorrow Never Dies. Like his non-committal movie counterpart, Bond has had a bit of a flirtatious time with perspectives over the years in gaming. One minute he's diving into first person and letting you live out all your tuxedo sporting fantasies from his perspective, and the next the camera pulls way back in an attempt to make the whole thing feel a bit more cinematic. Consequently, coming after the immaculate GoldenEye was never going to be an easy task, and so developer Black Ops Entertainment opted instead to switch everything to avoid inevitable comparisons to something they were probably probably never going to get close to. The end result was Tomorrow Never Dies, the first third person Bond and the first to let you play out a great number of the film's set pieces as you soaked in everything around you. It's primitive for sure, but it was one of the first titles to truly make you feel like old Jimmy B. Number 7. 007, Agent Under Fire. It's like some Morpheus meme styled what if scenario, but what if a whole generation of burgeoning first person shooter addicts, soon to be enthralled by the delights of online multiplayer, cut their teeth on EA's superb Agent Under Fire in just as important a way as Goldeneye four years prior. All right, maybe the game isn't that important. It's not like EA's follow-up managed to make waves big enough to define entire genres of competitive multiplayer, but the general feel of combat was tactile and responsive enough to give you a brilliant time bringing the pain to all manner of evil henchmen. From Pierce Brosnan's likeness, this time not a flat-faced polygonal skeleton like on the N64, to a huge variety of weapons and locales that took you over and underground across a sizable campaign, Agent Under Fire remains one of EA's most solid efforts from a time when annual franchises were thankfully a concept laughed out of the boardroom. Number 6. GoldenEye 007 2010. Wait, no, not that golden eye. Instead, this Daniel Craig fronted reboot of Rare's masterwork did for the original what Craig's newer films have done on the silver screen, i.e. make things more bombastic, less leery, and generally far more visceral, while updating the combat along the way. This Wii game would later see a re-release on both PS3 and the 360 a few years later, helping refine the multiplayer component thanks to not relying on the waggling hope for the best gunplay of the motion-controlled original. The old-school vibes were 
was strong with this one though. With that empowering sensation of being Bond, transferring across generations perfectly. Although there was a heavy COD influenced overhang leading to some very bombastic set pieces, for the most part this was a fitting tribute to the original game that so many people hold incredibly dear. Number 5. The World Is Not Enough The next best thing to Goldeneye for the N64, EA obviously decided that the blocky look of third person Bond didn't make for the best follow up to something that defined a generation's worth of childhoods, instead electing to return to first person blasting. Of course, it still couldn't beat old Goldilocks. Still, as will become increasingly apparent with this list, Bond is very much an EA franchise despite Rare's debut home run, but the former's movie games of yesteryear were fans first for Rare's into exactly what boxes to tick to make sure they got maximum sales alongside generally positive cultural reception. It's a shame you can't say that about EA today, but for that early run of games that found their feet alongside the industry itself, they're a pretty slick mix of nostalgia and innovation in retrospect. Number 4, 007 from Russia with Love. Reprising his role as the swagger sweating womanizer of choice for the first time since 1983, Sean Connery's return marked out from Russia with Love instantly as one of the best portrayals of Bond in a game, even if other titles might have had better gameplay. Even better, the game, made 40 years after the original movie it was based on, was never limited by its source material. Here the stakes were upped quite considerably, for instance adding in radical new Bond set pieces like the spy fighting a helicopter inside a museum with nothing more than an automatic rifle. Because yeah, sure that's exactly what the original classic was missing. Thanks to EA's pockets being deeper than a philosophy major's final paper, the production made every silent pistol headshot, tank detonation and one liner ring out perfectly, only being held back by more tactile combat perfected in Bond's other efforts. Number 3. James Bond 007 Nightfire When the industry was still experimenting with the idea of on-rail sections and the notion of just how much control they could take away from players, Nightfire acted as the perfect balance of set pieces and freedom. Consequently, the campaign mode turned into a rollicking ride of high-octane explosion-filled car chases and tight marksman-style gunplay, racked up in the high-end gloss that was lacking from other licensed games at the time. Brosnan once again lent his likeness to the role, but had someone else fill in on voice duties. Still, it didn't hamper the immersion one bit, and whether you were jetting through the campaign and dodging missiles in an Aston Martin, or firing back up the multiplayer to score a cross-map headshot with a rocket launcher, Nightfire is easily Bond's best first-person shooting experience post-2000. But it's not the best Bond FPS, because... Number 2. Goldeneye 007 Chances are, if you went out into the street right now and yelled, what's the best Bond game? Over the wail of police sirens coming to lock you up, you no doubt hear a wall of noise yelling back, Goldeneye. Rare's licensed tie-in has easily become their most celebrated effort, thanks to a slightly improvised approach that led to the multiplayer being included as a goof by the development team. They decided to just roll with it, and it worked in ways nobody could have possibly imagined. For any gamer in their 20s, their entire understanding of friendship-shattering split-screen multiplayer was no doubt born out of Goldeneye's meticulously crafted combat mechanics. Although now the state of online gaming boils down to making sure your ping or whatever is greater than the other players, Players, there'll never be anything so primarily enjoyable as jamming a wedge of card onto the screen so the other player can't see where you are while you twat them in the head with an insta-killing hat. Goddamn, was that good. Number 1. James Bond 007 – Everything or Nothing for all that Goldeneye does extremely well, and there is a lot, can you honestly say that the things that draw you to it are routed in it being a James Bond game or a supremely proficient FPS? In hindsight, it's most likely the latter, with the allure of competitive multiplayer creating an endless supply of thickly rimmed rose tinted specs for a game that's aged like milk. Everything and Nothing on the other hand remains one of the most enjoyable and instantly replayable Bond experiences ever. Brosnan is back for an entirely new adventure, complete with a new theme song and a host of celebrity likenesses scanned in. Let me just run down the voice cast for you, made up of Judi Dench, Willem Dafoe, John Cleese and Richard Keel's Jaws. Hell, even Pierce himself finally showed up in the flesh alongside the facial scanning to round out the package. Yes, yes, yes. For a change, third person action was the order of the day and damn was it better than ever, having you doing everything from offing opponents with a range of environmental attacks to sliding under an exploding tanker on a titty shitting superbike. Even the driving physics were modelled on EA's Need for Speed engine. Everything just worked and it came together like nothing else, making for the quintessential video game Bond experience through and through.
Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though, but it might be.